Welcome back to this short series on writing a paper with the Journal of Research Administration, JRA, in mind. This is part two, where we aim to focus on some general advice on writing. Parts three and four will deal with the detail of requirements for a typical research paper or other article for the journal. So, before we get into the detail of what goes where, we think it is helpful to go over a few principles about writing itself. You may have done essays at university or in school, but that may have been a while ago, and you didn't have a thousand other tasks that you needed to handle at the same time. The key things here are dealing with writing blocks, your writing style, planning and time management, getting started telling your story, and getting any necessary permissions to publish. So let's get a few potential issues out of the way. We've identified some writing blocks that can stop you even starting. Firstly, you may be worried that you don't really know what you will write about, even though you did put in a pretty convincing proposal. The solution here is to discuss it with your peer advisor. They will help you to define the project better. Next, you may fear that you really don't know enough about the topic and that some smart reviewer will tear you to shreds. Trust me, if you've been in the job for a while, you will know more than most about your specific interest. And while you will get some critiquing, it will help you rather than embarrass you. Next block, some people can get scared about academic writing. It's not actually that hard. It's just a slightly formal style that is easy to get the hang of after a few tries. We'll look at this one shortly. And the last hang up is the time factor. I have to confess that this is a biggie for most research managers and administrators. I think the solution is to recognize that writing a paper is a high priority but low urgency task. If you have read Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Effective People, you will know what I mean. Tasks that are important but not urgent are the ones that we really need to focus on. But so much of our time gets used up by urgent jobs, be they important or not. The answer is time management, which I'll expand on a bit now. As we have said, Research administrators and managers are busy people. We have to meet deadlines and only some of them are predictable. We also have to deal with unexpected issues that demand urgent attention. The challenge is therefore to find time for writing a paper that is never going to make the urgent list. It is one of those important things that we know we must get around to at some time. But if we are not careful, we spend all our time on the urgent work and suddenly we find we have lost out because we haven't done some of the things that really mattered. Time management books will tell you that you have to make time for the non-urgent but important jobs, even if some urgent but not so important jobs just don't get done. So it is vital to decide to put time aside for the task. Perhaps committing one day or one morning every week to the task, or perhaps using a time of day when you are most creative. Some people write best first thing in the morning, while others are evening people. I generally am more creative in the early morning or very late at night, so I save the non-creative, repetitive tasks for the afternoons. Some people suggest you define a period of time as non-negotiable, a sort of contract with yourself. Others choose times when everyone else is asleep in your household or no one is in at the office. Cell phones and emails need to go off for the duration. However you do it, you must try to achieve some progress on a regular basis. Now let's talk about your style of writing. By style, it can mean both how you write and also the way in which information is presented. So I'm going to look at how you write. P 
People have different ways of putting together an extended piece of writing. There is no one method that works for everyone, but it is possible to identify two particular ways in which successful authors write. The first are what I call plodders. People in this category will write something every day, perhaps only a few words or sentences. Each sentence will be carefully crafted and the information needed will be identified and entered, but they will be regular in their habits and will get to the end. The citations will be checked and entered in the correct format and then put in the reference list at the end. At the other extreme, there are the sprinters. These people are often non-productive for days or weeks at a time. During this period, the ideas are forming in their minds. Then one day, or more often one night, they will suddenly fire off several pages or even a whole paper. What emerges will be good, but there may be some asterisks where information has to go which is not instantly available from the mind of the writer. This generally gets added later, after the author has found the information. The only danger is that, like the proverbial tortoise and hare, sprinters may get so far and then fail to get started again without serious prodding. The point is that both work. It just depends on how you work best. I tend to be more of a sprinter than a plodder, but that is how I create best. The key thing is to keep at it. Whether you are a plodder or a sprinter, you still have to keep moving the work forward regularly. Even for a sprinter, there is quite a lot of editorial work too, making changes in response to your peer advisor's comments. Now let's talk about writing style. Essentially, when writing a paper, you use a formalised type of writing. Journals edited in British Commonwealth countries such as the UK, Australia, New Zealand or Anglophile African countries will use almost entirely the academic style, which is to use the third person passive tense. For example, the respondents were asked to fill in a form which was collected by the researchers rather than we asked respondents to fill in a form and we collected it. My favourite example is, the sample was strained while handling, which translates to, I dropped the thing on the floor. North American, that's USA and Canadian journals, tend to be more relaxed about this, and generally prefer the most readable form. JRA accepts either, as long as it is good English. Get started with drafts as soon as you can. Your peer advisor will want to see what you are capable of writing and where you need some help and advice at the start. Use Skype or any other visual direct communication method at least initially. This helps you and your advisor to get an understanding of each other. We all work better together if we have an image of the person we are working with and have talked to them live. Try to set milestones and try to keep them. We all know that working in research management involves unexpected deadlines, as we've said, and rush jobs. If you're delayed, no need to stress about it, but just reset the milestone and make sure you discuss it with your peer advisor and let him or her know when you will be able to meet a milestone. And please be realistic about turnaround times for your peer advisor. As we've indicated, they have other priorities too. As we indicated, JRA is published twice a year. There are no closing dates for submission, but you can still aim to meet a call for papers if they are issued for a particular volume. Other journals may have volumes in which they have a specific focus and there will be a target deadline for submissions to those, as there will also be for conference presentations where the proceedings are to be published. Checklists are one way of watching your progress. Set milestones for each section and tick off columns for things like first draft, peer advisor comments dealt with 
and returned, second draft, and so on. Getting started is sometimes one of the blocks to writing. However, your peer advisor will want to see what you can do so that he or she can start to advise you and help you to smooth the process. So, you should try to write something in the form in which it will appear in the final paper. It doesn't have to be complete. If you're a sprinter, you may want to add comments like add bit on university history here or add references to intellectual property here. Try not to have too many of these though. It is a very good idea to start with something that is relatively easy. Generally, you know what you have done or what you are about to do, so the methods section is often a good place to start. Another place to start could be the literature review. If you've done a lot of work on this already, of course, if you haven't looked at the literature, your peer advisor will be directing you to do this as a matter of urgency. In research, we are always standing on the shoulders of giants, i.e. building on what others have done before us. And after 50 years of publishing, there will not be too many topics that the JRA has not covered. Any author must think about and write to his or her audience. Yours will be mostly research administrators and managers. Hence, your language, choice of words and style will reflect what you would say anyway to colleagues. However, some readers will be new to the field or may be outside of it if your paper is relevant to them. So you should not assume intimate knowledge of the discipline. They will probably not be too familiar with your institute or your speciality, so you will have to explain some things carefully and concisely. Just a little about the overall approach to writing a paper. I find it helpful to think of it as telling a story. Your introduction sets the scene and points to the issues that need to be addressed. Next comes the methods that you used, followed by the results you got. Then you tell your reader what the data means, analysis, and you follow that by suggesting what it all means, discussion. And finally, summarise the main findings in the conclusions. So you don't tell your reader the answers before they know what you did. Of course, there can be exceptions. An abstract or summary will cover everything. But that is really like the cover notes on a novel to encourage someone browsing through papers to read yours more. Another way of looking at this is to see it as a checklist of four main sections. First, you give the background. Who, why, what, how, when and where, and who benefits. Next, you tell your readers what others have done. That's your introduction and literature review. Then, you can tell them what you did. That's your methods. Then, you tell them what you found your outcomes in the form of results and analysis, followed by a discussion of what you think it means for your reader, which might include an estimate of the impact of the work for your organisation and others, and you might make some recommendations about things that should be done. Finally, you make your conclusions. You will end up with your references that you use so anyone can check out what you've been saying acknowledge any help you got, and for JRA, you provide details of yourself. We'll go through all these in more detail shortly. Some of the things to think about first are try to be specific about what you are trying to achieve. Use the aims, hypotheses or research question to approach to help keep you focused. Again, discuss these with your peer advisor. But start writing a draft of one section early. It doesn't have to be perfect. The methodology, as I've said, is often a good place to start. Or the literature review if you've already done one. Get it to your peer advisor early. I suggest you work on one chapter at a time. 
send it to your peer advisor, and then get started on another while you wait for his or her comments. Style of writing, that is the way you put sentences together, is to some extent personal as well as formalised. The idea is to be concise and consistent. Short, specific sentences work best. Right from the start, make sure you try to follow the guidelines for the target journal. This applies to font size, layout and format. For example, JRA does not accept footnotes and nearly everything is in 12 point times Roman font. Follow the instructions in the author instructions. And for references, use the APA style. Here are a few tips about writing a paper. We write with the reader in mind. Just who are they? Follow the journal's instructions from the start. This will save a lot of time and effort later. Use short, clear sentences. They're easy to absorb and to read. And editing is easier too. And don't assume the reader knows such things as abbreviations, acronyms, details of your institution. The acronym UK means something very different to someone from Kentucky to someone from from England. As you probably noticed, I sometimes repeat information as a reinforcement. This works for teaching aids, but in a paper it's not advisable. A paper is not a teaching aid as such, but rather a concise source of information. Next, typographical errors are everyone's nightmare. My computer loves to put its own words and spellings into text I write or dictate, usually with hilarious or embarrassing results. So, check and recheck your writing. Even the computer tools we use are not perfect, although they are very helpful. Be concise and focused. It is very easy to cover too much material that is just not relevant. Your peer advisor will help you with this, but be prepared for lengthy recommended deletions. Finally, the most common source of typos and grammatical errors is when you change something. An edited sentence or paragraph can have more errors than the original. Right at the start, it is worth giving you a few tips about the length of a paper. If it is too long, it may be difficult for the editor to fit it in to a particular edition of the journal. On the other hand, a shorter paper is a lot easier to review and publish, since the editor may need to complete a particular edition with something that is short enough to fit the space available. So, typically, 8 to 20 pages is a reasonable length, provided, of course, that it has all the information. Next, a word that may help you avoid considerable embarrassment later on. Just make sure that people who might have concerns about you writing a paper, about a situation that might concern them personally, or in which they are players, are aware of your plans, and that you have their agreement or permission to write the paper. This applies especially if your paper concerns changes within your own institution, where there may be some sensitivities, or where there are intellectual property issues. Naturally, you will have to obey privacy rules and all ethical matters about confidentiality of information. But as a research administrator, you will probably be well aware of all these sorts of issues. In short, check out the possible stakeholders. It is best to do this twice. Once at an early stage when you have a clear picture of the overall content and aim of your paper. The second time is when you are ready to send off the paper to the journal. On this occasion, you can add a note saying that you thought your boss would like to see the final version of the paper that they had approved a while back before it goes off. Tell them that you plan to send it off in a couple of days, so if they have any issues to let you know in the next day or two. If you don't hear, you will assume all is well. In other words, be a little pushy at this stage, unless you think your boss will take offence at this. 
To complete this section, let's take a quick overview of the writing process as a whole. First you define your aims for the paper. This will help you keep focused on what goes in and what gets left out. Then you get started writing drafts by doing the sections that come easiest first. Send your early drafts to your peer advisor who will review them and return with comments. You should refine the draft according to the directions and resubmit. Then, while waiting for comments, you can get on with the next section. Once the whole text has been completed and reviewed in draft form, you'll start tidying it all up so that the sections flow together. This is when you deal with the overall paper. Things like references and acknowledgements come in here. You will also finally, as a last stage, add the abstract. More on that later. In practice, you will find you will need to make edits over the whole paper. Your peer advisor will help here. By the way, don't be surprised if your peer advisor suggests one way of writing something and later suggests something else. This is because it is hard to get things exactly right until you've got the whole of the paper to review. Once you and your peer advisor are happy with the final version, it is time to submit to the journal. The editor will receive it and send it to one, two or more reviewers who will provide feedback and comments to the editor. Normally, you will be asked to make alterations, which you should do quickly. Then the revised paper goes back to the editor, who may accept it or require further changes. And so it goes on until it is accepted. More on this process later. That completes part two of this webinar series. In the next webinar, we will go over a paper section by section, and then in part four, we will deal with the submission and review process in detail. And as before, we would really appreciate your comments and suggestions for improvements to this webinar.